This is uh, an adjunct to the video I talked about young men and hair transplant safety, but it also can be used in, uh, universally. Um, what I want to talk about is really what are steps that you can do as either a male or a female, um, particularly people that are in the early phases of hair loss to manage hair loss because there's so much voodoo out there on the internet about you know you have to do a rain dance and figure out weird stuff to do to help your hair grow. Um, and I, I, and I, I want to be specific as I can so that things can work well for you. Now I'm not going to get into detail about the two FDA approved um, uh, medications because there's so much information that I've already shot on that. But suffice to say that I'm very, very passionate about finasteride or Propecia as well as minoxidil or Rogaine in terms of benefits for you. Uh, I want to just give a couple quick updates of that and talk about two other ways that are very helpful. So first, the update of finasteride. Um, there's a lot of stuff on the internet, internet about permanent sexual side effects. Um, clearly, I got a lot of patients that are scared. If you've been using it for two to three years and you got scared with the internet, I don't see why you should stop. In fact, I have patients that come to me and they said, I stopped because of the internet stuff. And I'm not saying it doesn't cause per permanent sexual side effects. I'm, I'm saying in my experience, having written thousands of prescriptions, I've had one patient tell me this. Now, remember one thing, I was, I was uh, in the meeting last year at uh, uh, Bahamas, and they're saying that you know men over 40, I'm over 40, uh, have sexual dysfunction as they continue to go up in age. So sometimes there's a correlation with that. So there's a demographic statistical element that people over a certain age could just have sexual side effects. So I'm not saying that it does or doesn't cause it, but especially for gentlemen that have been on it, uh, because in my experience it's so rare that it occurs that I, I don't want you to be scared away from it because it's such a powerful medication. The other update that may be important for you is that starting in uh, March of this year, it's actually off patent, so you don't have to necessarily buy Propecia brand uh, from Merck. So it's a lot less expensive. You don't have to break up pills from five milligrams. That may be something that you don't know about. Uh, maybe just slightly still more expensive than cutting up a five milligram pill. Uh, but at the same time, I believe it's just so much easier, and especially as you probably know, for females that can get pregnant, if they're seeing powder that breaks apart, that can lead to problems with birth defects if they're taking it, but not if you're taking it, if you're the gentleman. So a lot of people say, I stopped taking because I'm more about birth defects. If I'm having it, it should not have any problems if you're the gentleman. It's only the female, and the female, if there's powder all over your sink, that can, and, there, and she gets pregnant, there would be problems there. So. Just a quick summary of an update there. With minoxidil, there's not a lot to report with it, or Rogaine. I do want to say a couple things. One is the fact that Rogaine is very, very effective for both men and women, and finasteride really only used for men. And also the fact that in the last year, a little bit longer time, so March of last year, 2012, so I don't know when you're going to be watching this video. It could be 2015 when you watch this. But the uh, March of 2012, uh, Rogaine foam went off patent. So you can actually get that at Walgreens or CVS and get a little less expensive. I hear currently what I've, I've heard is in the past, if you bought three bottles of Rogaine foam, you'd basically get a fourth one for free. So it's still um, more expensive than if you get liquid. Uh, but it, it is a little bit less expensive, maybe about 25% than uh, uh, Rogaine brand foam. Again, all these things do change on the internet and, and all that, so you, I always encourage you to speak with your doctor about what the current uh, uh, pricing is uh, for any of these things. And I don't, I don't have any uh, uh, stocks in any of these companies, so I'm not trying to promote that. Um, what I'm excited about is two new ways of managing hair loss without surgery, and then I'm going to tell you about things that are on the horizon in the next two years of what's coming out uh, soon. So the two new things that, that I really believe are important is PRP and A-cell. I have a total separate video where I go into detail about it, so I'm not going to spend 10 minutes and discuss it. But PRP or platelet-rich plasma and A-cell, which is a porcine or pig bladder morselized into fine powder, mixed together and injected in the scalp and then activated through either bovine thrombin, calcium gluconate, or through a derma roller or some kind of physical uh, activity, will, can stimulate hair growth. And I really, it, it, it works very similar to Propecia Rogaine in the sense that it's really good for people with early to moderate hair loss. Propecia Rogaine uh, or finasteride, uh, minoxidil, and uh, the uh, PRP and A-cell are not going to be quite as effective if you are like a Norwood 6 or 7. That translates into someone really, really bald. If you're like slick bald, it's only going to help hold what you have, but it's not going to regrow hair. So this is why for men today that are very, very young, that may not be a safe candidate for hair transplant. If that doesn't make sense to you, please 
uh, on YouTube, type in Young Men Safety Hair Transplant Dr. Lamb, and there's a whole video of that. Again, I don't want to go through that. That's a 10 minute video. But understand that there's now so many more options since I shot that video that I want to encourage you to watch this video and understand that there's other options that are available, not just finasteride and Rogaine, especially either if you've had sexual side effects with finasteride or if you just don't want to take it for whatever reasons. Um, so PRP and ACEL has been very effective in my men and women candidates, and this is one of those uh, treatments that are universal that you can inject probably about every year to two years to, to help with growth. And platelet-rich plasma is just basically a very quick summary is blood drawn from you, uh, purified centrifuge so that you only get the growth factors, and then mixed with this pig bladder, which sounds absolutely insane, but it is, is not. I've been doing it for about two years now, and I'm seeing really, really good growth with that. So that's something that can be helped. People always ask me, well, if I do PRP and A-cell, do I need to do Propecia? Do I need to do Rogaine? And the answer actually is if you can do all of them, they all help. It's like playing a piano with two hands. They're synergistic. They're not, in, they're not redundant. So people say, well, if I'm on Rogaine, do I need uh, finasteride? I say look at your budget, your side effect profile, your desire to do it, your ability to do it. Like even Rogaine, if you can only do it three times a week, it's a lot better than zero in my opinion. So a lot of people have this sort of all or none proposition, well I gotta do Rogaine twice a day or I'm not gonna be on it. But really whatever you can do is gonna be beneficial. If you can only do the, um, the PRP and A-cell, fantastic. If you can do that with Rogaine maybe twice a week, great. If you can do the finasteride, if you're having side effects, cut it down to one, once every other day. If you can't do that, do it twice a week. Anything can help hair loss. And so it's not an all or none proposition and they're not redundant. These pathways I'm describing right now all are synergistic, and synergistic is a big word to mean all of them work together in collaboration toward a better result, like a team, like my team uh, that works with me for hair transplants. The final pathway is something that I've been leery of for quite a while, I didn't integrate it until the last year, which is laser technology. So in the past, laser technology had a bad rap because of one of two things. Either you had to come to the office all the time to get it done, or you had this hair comb that, it, that really didn't maybe do as much as you thought it was going to do. Laser technology is very powerful. How does it work and what are the ones that are available today and what do I advocate? Well, basically it works by working about 640 to 670 nanometers at range and laser technology will help bioactivate the, the, the cells, the stem cells within the hair follicle to help the hair grow. And it, grow, it works similar to, to Propecia, similar to Rogaine, but through a different pathway. So once again, synergistic and this is not redundant. The great thing with laser technology, it's easy to use and there's really virtually no side effects. The, the two models that I, uh, that I sell are iGrow and LaserCap. The iGrow has about 24 diodes and 24 uh, lasers. Diodes are the ones that are in the, um, uh, in the comb itself, which in my opinion doesn't do very much because you gotta comb through your hair. It's, they're not medical grade lasers. The iGrow is not that expensive, it's around $700, so it does work well, but not quite as well as what the laser cap does. The laser cap is much more expensive, closer to three grand. Uh, with that technology, to me, it's a much more elegant device. It, it's on your head, you can't, it looks like a baseball cap. It can be actually placed under almost any baseball cap. You just turn it on, you put it on for 30 minutes, three times a week, it's so easy, you're just watching TV, and it starts to grow hair within three to six months, and over a year it gets better. Um, with this technology, that red wavelength, the great thing with this is the laser cap uses about 240 medical grade lasers. So that is really, really, really works so well and I offer my patients a little bit of a price break when they come to see me for this. Uh, so the one thing I want you to understand is that laser caps truly, truly work well toward giving that total package of helping my patients look the best that they humanly can. And so I don't think any of these things are redundant and they all help toward the total package of getting you better. Now in the old days you had to go to office. Do you need to still do that? In my opinion today, no. That $30,000 laser that sits there is sitting dormant because that laser, you can put it in a laser cap. They've now integrated that level into a cap and if you think about it, if, you, if I had you come to the office three times a week, you would never make it here. You have too much, you got a family life, you got personal life, you got professional life. Now you can just go home, put on your head and watch TV and 30 minutes flip it off and you're done three times a week. And if you can't even do that, do it twice a week. But really three times a week is helpful. The other question people ask me is, if I do it three times a week, should I do it six? Should I do it eight? Should I do it 10? No. It's too much stimulation can actually be counterproductive. So you really just need about 30 minutes, maybe to an hour, somewhere in there, just three times a week. Very, very easy, okay? And really just 30 minutes is all you need. Don't worry about the, the comment about the hour, just 30 minutes. 
Um, the other thing that I want to talk about is where are things going? You know, I go to so many meetings, I'm always hearing the newest things that are coming on. Uh, there's two products that are coming on the market that I think will be really exciting. One may be sooner than the other. The one that may be sooner than the other is, is you may have heard of Latisse, which is, uh, uh, the generic name is Bimatoprost, which is a prostaglandin uh, uh, product that actually is ma manufactured by Allergan, the makers of Botox. They help with eyelash growth and some people with eyebrow uh, growth. And so this is actually going through FDA trials right now for, um, for hair growth in the head. Uh, out of uh, anecdotal experience, a colleague of mine out of New Jersey actually has used this and he says it's phenomenal. It's really, really good and he's had good, good results with that. That's the only anecdote at this time and it is going through FDA trials. Something that I think is going to be, again, a separate pathway that if you did it with conjunction, all these things, great. If you did independent of these things, great. You got to factor all those factors, budget, side effects, cost, I mean, well, same thing, but budget, side effects, ease of use, desires, all those things you put together and, and I will help you know, create a package for you that makes sense for you. But Latisse right now is, I think, very expensive if you're trying to take this eyelash little tiny bottle and put it over your whole scalp. You can do that, but it, it may be pretty cost prohibitive if you're doing that because it's already pretty expensive just for the eyelashes. Um, the final thing that's coming out, I don't know when exactly, is called Histogen. I use a product called uh, Regenica for the skin, which I actually use on my skin every day. It makes me look more youthful and vibrant. Um, and Regenica product actually by Gail Naughton is being repackaged for hair growth. Um, right now, it's, it, it's, it's called Histogen right now. The early trials have not been as successful as they want. They're still in the process of making sure this works, uh, but it's something that could be pretty exciting as another adjunct out there toward uh, growth. And then probably further down the road is stem cells, uh, either triggering uh, your own growth, which is really what sort of, the, sort of laser technology can help, but maybe more targeted gene therapy, things like that. Um, is definitely somewhere, I don't know when, the joke always is people ask, you know, hey Dr. Lamb, when is stem cell going to be available? And 10 years ago they said next year, and every year it's like next year, so I don't know. You know, I don't think even the people at the forefront know uh, where exactly it's going to be. But I think that's probably the latest and greatest things that I could tell you about. What we can do to slow down hair loss, especially if you're in that early to moderate phase. And one other thing that you may want to think about is using products that camouflage it. So I just want to add that. So the young 23-year-old men coming to me, it's not just about hair loss, it's also about camouflage what they have. Product that I advocate, it's not that I have stock in the company or anything, I do sell it here, it's called Nanogen. And that really is amazing because it clings to your hair and covers the, the baldness instantaneously. And now with this locking spray, you can go swim with it with only about 10% coming out. And because the nanogen fibers are uh, electromagnetically locked to, the, 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 to the, the hair, it looks more natural, clings at a 90 degree angle, so it gives more density with less product. And you can color match it to your, to your scalp. So that's one thing you don't want to forget is that besides you know, hair loss medicines and besides transplant, there's also camouflaging options that are very inexpensive and very easy to use. Hopefully that's a good current update for 2013 of where we are in the world of hair loss.